It really was. And as I was thinking about this morning and thinking, right, how? Because it's so interesting to hear how they got on, and especially someone outside of uh, leadership going with us this time just to see what was going on, to see how life is lived, to see how the other half lives. In fact, probably more than the other half of the world. The Western world, we are so blessed. We are so privileged. We have so much. And do you know what? The faces in those kids and the people who live there, they are happier than we are. So someone, you know, I know Joe had said about, you know, how they're living and all the rest. They're happier than we are because, number one, they don't know. So why would we want to give them what we've got when it doesn't work for us? And yet we have so much. And I want us to just think of something different. Um, this week, um, it was Megan's 25th birthday. She's a quarter of a century old. You're cold. <laughs> And she was just saying it was on Thanksgiving Day, which is uh, the American Thanksgiving. And I, I read up a wee bit, it just sort of something twigged with me, and I thought, yes, we want to talk about this today. And it was just um, the thought of Thanksgiving for us. And in America, they're thankful. They, they came together, and from they, they moved, they thank God for the harvest, they thank God for their families. And so they wanted to thank everything. And I thought, how thankful are we? And we've just heard what's going on in India. And those kids are thankful. They were thankful and privileged. They probably felt very privileged to go to this restaurant and have this beautiful meal in this beautiful place. Because when we usually go, uh, they're all sitting, they prepare all the food for us. They let us eat and then whatever's left, they get eating it. And it's okay, they cook for them all. I'm not saying they're starving, but they are very servant-minded and they're brilliant, but so to be able to, for Joe and them to take them all out and see and have a meal and be served was probably wow. Whereas we just think, and what? You know, so Thanksgiving, I think, is a very important thing. And what I want us to do today, I looked up this psalm, and I want us to read it together, but not just over. I want us to read it thoughtfully. So we're going to read it together here. So let's look at Psalm 136, and it's verses 1 to 9. And I'm going to start, and I just want us all to do it together. So, oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the God of gods, for his mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endures forever. To him alo who alone does great wonders, his mercy endures forever. To him who by wisdom made the heavens, his mercy endures forever. To him who laid out the earth above the waters, his mercy endures forever. To him who made great lights, his mercy endures forever. The sun to rule by day, his mercy endures forever. The moon and the stars to rule by night, his mercy endures forever. Then we go to verse 23 and it says, Who remembered us in our lowly state, his mercy endures forever. And rescued us from our enemies. His mercy endures forever. Who gives food to all flesh. His mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the God of heaven. For his mercy endures forever. I hope that does something inside us today. I hope that does something of thankfulness inside our hearts and our lives today. We want to be thankful for our families. And I want us just to be challenged this morning. Are we thankful for our families? Now, families are families. We all know, you know, there's the ups and the downs and all the stuff in between. But families are families. Are we thankful for our families? Are we thankful for moms and dads, for grandparents, for children, for brothers and sisters, for sons and daughters, for great grandparents? Are we thankful? Are you and am I thankful this morning for everyone that is in our family? Are we thankful for friends this morning? We all have friends. 
Are we thankful for, or are we thankful friends? Are we thankful friends? Are we appreciative of, of those friends around us? Are we thankful for our friends? Are we thankful that we have a, our health? That little lady that Brian talked about, they have no money to go to the hospital. So she just has to live like that. So her only answer for her is to get prayer and God to heal her. We can go to the doctor and be off work for six months. You know, and that's great. But are we thankful for that? Or are we just going, hmm, whatever, you know. Sometimes when we've spent a bit of time in um, a nursing uh, area, we are thankful for what those nurses do. But are we thankful enough? So we want to make sure we're being thankful. Are we thankful for a work? Uh, Monday morning again, I have to go to work. Are we thankful for our work? We've got a job. We've got finances then because we've got an income from that. And we have... Um, the capacity to do a job. We're broadening our capacity. Are we thankful for our job? Are we looking for the next part of our job? Are we getting better at what we're doing? Are we thankful for that? Are we thankful for the skills that God has given to us and that we've been able to hone those skills? Are we thankful to be able to do the things we do? Are we thankful for our homes? Oh, if only I lived this place. If only I had that. If only I had the other. If only I had a bigger car. If only I had a bigger house. If only I had a better kitchen. Are we thankful? Are we thankful? Thanksgiving is about being thankful. Are we thankful for our families this morning? Are we thankful for all those around us? The, the list goes on and on. The list just is what... Uh, so I want us to say to our hearts this morning, how thankful am I? Individually this morning, how thankful are we for what we have around us? Those kids are thankful for what they've got. That's their life, but they're thankful for it. You know, if we're not thankful and appreciative and say good stuff about what we've got, do you think God's going to give us more? The Bible tells us that. If we're thankful for what we have, more will be given to us. If we're grouse and gripe and groan and moan, which really here in the West we're most good at, and we've all done it, whether we're nodding or not, we've all done it. Let's be thankful for what God has done for us. Let's be thankful for everything that's in our lives. Let's be thankful for who he is. The start of that psalm was being thankful for who God is. And we talked about that the last time, about who God is and how wonderful he is and what he's created for us. But he's given us the breath that we breathe. He's given us the lives that we live. He's given us um, a passion for him. He's given us life to live. He's given us a call that we should have in our lives. He's given us everything we have, and we should be thankful. It said, his mercy endures forever. What is mercy? Mercy is res not receiving what we deserve. If you've been going to church at any length of time, we do not deserve to live. We do not deserve to have life, but Jesus in his mercy. This is for his mercy endures forever. We get what we don't deserve. We get, no, sorry, we get, we don't get what we deserve. Mercy is what we don't, not getting what we really truly deserve because he loves us. And it talks about it being forever and ever and ever and ever. So no matter where we are at our stage in life, no matter where we are at this right moment, we may have been more thankful in the past, but maybe we need to get a bit more thankful for the future. We may be thankful right now, or we may have just come in a grump this morning and just, you know, sorry. What else do we say? God's loving kindness is his mercy, his unfailing love. It's said here, steadfast covenant love when God has made covenant and we have made covenant with him he will stand by his every word to us we're not so good at standing by our every word to him I'm not, that's why I'm saying it if the rest of you are good at it well, please come and tell me how you do it we are not so good at standing by and being steadfast in the covenant that he's made with us. He sent his son Jesus to die for us. 
I'm just going to read one more verse at the very end of this. So we may be thinking, well, that's okay. You don't know what I'm going through. You don't know what's going on. Here's a lovely verse for us to take home with us today. The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Whatever's concerning you today, the Lord will perfect it. Whatever's going on in your life today, the Lord will perfect it. He's saying it there. He says, your mercy, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. That's you and me. He has made us. He's not going to forsake us. And if we will give to him anything that is going on in our lives, anything that we're worried about, anything we're concerned about, anything that's just not going the way it ought to go, the Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Now, if you want to try and perfect it yourself, get on with it. And God will go, okay. But I will guarantee you haven't tried that myself. You have to go, okay, God, you need to do this because I can't do it. The Lord will perfect what concerns us. And we want to just finish off by looking at that today. Let's just read this one again. This is the word of God we're reading. The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Your mercy, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. Let's pray before the band come and sing with us. Father in heaven, thank you, thank you, thank you for everything that you have done for us. Thank you for your unending mercy. Thank you for your eternal mercy. Thank you for your forever mercy in that you don't do what we deserve. We love you, Lord. Help us on this Thanksgiving weekend. Help us in the light of what we've seen this morning and the kids are happy there. Help us here in LCC today to go out of here choosing to have a thankful heart for everything that you have done for us. In Jesus' precious name we ask it. And everyone said, Amen. Sing with us.